Howdy folks, I'm Jeff. And I'm John. And we are the J&J &J Show. Show. And Adam Art brought us over here to Weber State University. University. Yes. And we're actually in the EV building. This is like so cool because over here, they actually have running uh, vehicles. And then in between, they have all the parts taken apart, taken off so that they can actually, they don't have to take those apart and they already have the batteries and, and everything already out here, the cooling system so that uh, they can work on them, they can see them, they can teach on them. And one of the things that we've never seen is the battery housings off of them. And so right here we've got that John Kelly that's going to tell us a little bit about it. And back here, who do you have with you, John? We have Cave. He's one of the instructors right here at the school. He's been in our industry for years, and he's teaching these kids this EV stuff. That's cool. And he came from Ford, where yes. if they had problems, that's who they called. So, uh, uh, John, right here we've got this one. And one of the questions that I asked was, okay, they said this is kind of safe to touch as far as because it's not the full voltage. But I was asking, and he said they had the manual disconnect. Well, this is where the uh, wiring hooks up. But the manual disconnect on this particular one is actually right up here. And this would be like underneath the seat or in the back trunk area. And they would have to pull it, uh, stuff out to get to the manual cutoff switch and pull that out. Right. It's actually under the center console. You lift up the center console and pull the tray out. So this is actually way up in the front. Yes. That's how long this battery is. Yes. Yeah. And so the rear axle would be somewhere back here? No, this is actually the front. The so front, the okay. It's right behind that T section back there. Wow, this is like huge. So basically, like if they're looking for to see how long a battery's gonna last, or if see there's a problem, then they can go in and look at each one and say, yeah, these are, these are close. Yes. Because that's one of the big deals when we try saying how long this is going to last. Right. And this is actually a second generation uh, Volt, yes. which uh, was active up till 2019. So this, this is uh, like four years out. Right. How, how long are you seeing batteries last? Uh, on the Volts? Uh, 10 years, 150,000 miles or so uh, before I'm, I've noticing on some of the Facebook groups that there are people that are starting to have some problems with them. So like uh, the Tesla is like real popular and we'll back up just here a little bit and we've got the first generation and then we get into the Teslas and uh, we really want y'all to see how big these packs are but like when we stop right here, this one is uh, 444 cells per module, but 7,000 per the battery. And this is just one of how many? One of 16 battery modules that are in series with each other on the Tesla Model S. And this actually shows a little bit more of the deal. And this is out of the housing. And then that one behind there is actually, uh, is that a hybrid out of a Ford? That's our Ford Explorer hybrid yeah. uh, battery right there, 1.5 kilowatt hour. And this one is using a gas engine and the battery pack. And so you can see the size difference right here yeah. between this <laughs> and one of these that's the entire bottom of the vehicle. Right. And uh, one of the big deals that, that people don't understand, if we get back just a little bit further here, is this is basically the whole underside of the car. This came off of a Nissan Leaf, which is a smaller vehicle. So when we talk about lifting these, uh, raising the vehicle, that's a big concern. It is. You want to make sure that you're using the proper lift points and, or floor jack points so that you're not damaging the battery, especially on the, the cars that have even larger batteries, like this Tesla Model F, the Model 3 battery right here. And it's, it's, this is the edge of the car right here. So yeah. you've got to... <laughs> Basically, really you're running a uh, deal up right here. Well, it, there's there's some special jacking points. There's two on each side, uh, little round holes underneath that you put the jack. And the technicians cannot touch this at all. Well, they can. Yeah. With the, uh, this is just with the jack. Oh, with the jack. Yeah. Uh, it's it's thin sheet metal. Yeah. So you put your jack in the wrong spot, and you're 
caving in the battery housing, which could cause a short circuit. This is one of four battery modules that's inside that's of here. Inside there. So if you cave that sheet metal into where it starts pushing on the battery cells themselves, yeah. then you cause a big problem. <laughs> How much does this weigh? Because uh, the deal that we've heard is they now they need special special lifting tables, and you have to have increased capacity on your jacks. Yes, yeah, your hoists and your lifting tables. Uh, these weigh anywhere f from, say, the the, sh the Nissan Leaf battery there is a little under a thousand pounds, but some of these, uh, like in the Ford Mustang we've got next door, 1,600 pounds, um, and then even heavier on the, I don't have any of the vehicles here, but like the, the GMC Hummer, I think yeah. it was 3,800 pounds, so you need to have a, a hoist that can handle the weight of the vehicle plus if you're going to be lifting the dropping that down the battery yeah lowering that down out of the vehicle you need a good lift table to do that that's what so, we heard is it was like up to five or six thousand pounds yes and some of them they, they don't use like a scissor lift to bring them out it's just a table you set the whole car down on the whole truck down on unbolt the battery and then you lift the truck off the battery back up yeah so. Wow, what do you think about that, John? <laughs> That's pretty awesome. <laughs> that is something. And then, of course, here, and this is one thing, is, is folks need to understand that anytime you go to a hybrid or a all-electric, all of a sudden, the cooling systems, now you have multiple cooling pumps. Uh, the air conditioner, that has to be electric because, well, like when the vehicle shuts off and it's running on electric power, or even these new start-stop technology is they have different uh, AC units in them as far as okay now we have to worry about the oil that's in the compressor has to be we're done conduct electricity and then Cade tell us what you were telling me on the uh, the coolant because I thought that all of a sudden it was different coolant and you just explained about the deionized water Yes, so when you're using coolant in a battery electric vehicle or a hybrid electric vehicle, um, you don't want to get um, loss of isolation. You can get um, loss of isolation through a fault in the compressor or something bad happens to it. So you want that deionized water in there. And your coolant that's recommended by the manufacturer for your battery electric vehicle, your hybrid, your plug-in hybrid vehicles, come with deionized water in it already from the factory. And so well, from the that's pre-mixed on the yep, label, it says pre-mixed. Pre and tell them what they don't want to do. You do not want to go out to your hose outside and fill it with water like you did in the old days with your 56 Chev, or you don't want to do <laughs> um, distilled water or anything like that in there because it's ionized. So if you put that into a hybrid system or an electric system, there's a chance that you will get a loss of isolation concern. And it, and it was funny because John was talking about this with uh, uh, basically dirty water. You said water is does not conduct electricity water itself it doesn't it's the minerals inside of water that does and that's why we're saying deionized water right completely pure so that's so interesting uh this i mean we could go around this room and just talk and talk and and share 